Hello, today we're going to have a look at flying the Dark Star in Microsoft Flight Simulator in a circuit around Edwards Air Force Base. This is the prototype reconnaissance aircraft that features in the Top Gun Maverick movie. And it's worth pointing out this aircraft is entirely fictional. People are busy, you know, saying all over the internet, oh, it's based on the SR-72, which in itself is a black program, you know, is classified. So Lockheed Martin may have been involved in the movie to give them some guidance. But this only looks like the, um, the artist's impressions that have appeared on a couple of Lockheed Martin briefing documents. So, and it looks vaguely like it, not entirely, because the real SR-72 that Lockheed Martin have been talking about won't have a pilot. So the only reason they've put a pilot in it for the movie is so Tom Cruise has got something to do. So anyway, it's early in the morning, Edwards Air Force Base, and we're going to take it for a circuit. So let's go and get in the aircraft and get it fired up. So the first thing we do is switch the electricity on. And then we start the APU. And that, when that switches to ready, we can start the engines. So just waiting for this to flick over to ready. There it goes. And engines right and left engines on we'll go and turn our lights on as well turn the landing lights on as well so we're not going to be engaging the scramjet we're just going to fly a basic circuit around Edwards Air Force Base just to see how this aeroplane operates Okay, now the engine's up and running. We can go and turn on the generators. Okay. Parking brake off. Ease the engines forwards. And we're going to taxi out to the main runway. and see how we get on and I'll show you how you can quite easily fly circuits and on the downwind leg I'll show you that it's actually quite straightforward to the fly at low speed as well you don't get much pitch authority but it actually hangs on to the pitch you've got so I'm guessing it's simulating fly-by-wire in that regard that the aircraft will remain stable but it kind of glides like a brick It does have radios you can tune in, but I haven't found a way of changing the, the display here to, uh, to, to show the radios. Otherwise, we could use ILS, which would be quite handy. But we're not going to. We're just going to do a visual approach. So we're just taxiing out. We're going to be using this screen a lot, and I'll explain what's going on on, that sc on the screen as we travel around. Okay, here comes the runway. Okay, so what we will do is we'll get centred up and we're not going to look out the window as much. We're going to zoom the mouse in to look at this screen and this is going to be our home for the next few minutes as we fly this circuit. Okay, so we push the throttles forwards. Remember we're expecting a hefty crosswind from the right. So the velocity vector in the centre of the display will reflect that. So we're coming up to 100 and 200 knots pull gently back and we're airborne so it comes off the ground very easily yeah there you go look the velocity vector has shifted so I'm just easing the nose up we're 250 240 knots so gear up we'll climb out so we're watching the altitude over here and watching the airspeed we're going to keep it relatively slow as we level out, it will start to accelerate. So we're coming up for 5,000 feet. So if we nose down, we can see the vertical speed comes down towards zero. We've just edged over 5,000. It doesn't really matter. So let's go and fly the reciprocal route. So we're do it's about 235 degrees, 240 degrees. It's the wrong way direction. So we keep an eye on that on the. Um, the velocity vector. As long as this is above the horizon line, then we're climbing. 
So as we pull around the turn, you will notice the speed start to bleed off, unless I obviously counter it. But as long as the velocity vector stays above the horizon line, then we are not dropping towards the floor. I'm deliberately not going too fast. Okay, so let's go for about 45 degrees, is it? We'll check on a moment on the map. Okay, so nose down gently. Speed is coming up, obviously, because we're not turning anymore, so I'm going to arrest the speed. You you have a velocity vector, or a change vector, on the um, indicated airspeed as well, which shows you how quickly or slowly you are accelerating or decelerating okay let's just have a quick look at the map you can see us zooming along what we're looking for is the actual runway direction which is 46 degrees and the wind you can see at altitude is 30 knot crosswind but it's more like 20 knots at ground level so we're going to turn across to 40 degrees and slow back down Something that does seem to be a, a bit off with this, for such a sleek aeroplane, when you pull the throttles back, it decelerates very quickly. Which I don't imagine has been modelled very well, but again, it's all supposition. I guess you could say those engines aren't very um, aerodynamic. Take it, there you go. So you can see there's the main runway, Edwards. So we're going to fly out, turn back in, and come in and land. So, looking out the window, you don't get to see much. If you press space, you can sit up in the seat a bit more. Let's zoom back in, because our focus is going to be entirely on this screen as we come back in. So we're up to 10,000 feet, so we're going to drop back down now. It's worth pointing out, while we're at this altitude, let's just try bleeding the speed off and see how long we can hold the velocity vector on the horizon for. So speed is coming off. Just want to do it gently. So I'm hoping the throttle's a tiny bit so we don't decelerate too fast. So we can come down to 130 knots looking level flight. So this can land remarkably slowly. We're going to accelerate back out to a decent speed to turn, so about 200-ish, 250. And then we'll make our turn back towards Edwards Air Force Base. So remember, we're using the elevators as we bank over to keep that velocity vector at least level with the horizon. So we're... Uh, playing back stick as we do we will lose speed because obviously we're increasing alpha or the you know, the angle of attack of the aircraft to the air okay so there's the runway out in front of us so we can roll back out because of the crosswind, we're going to have to fly at a slight crab angle, but to be honest, we're off to the right anyway. So we'll let the aircraft drift to the left on our way in. And then just straighten it up. So we're going to put the gear down now. It's a bit fast actually for putting the gear down, but we're not going to worry too much. So now we're countering the crosswind and just aligning the velocity vector on the, the runway. 
We know from when we were flying along at 10,000 feet, we can slow down dramatically. As long as the aircraft's in the right kind of position, we can just gently lift the nose and bleed the speed off over the runway and then drop down slowly. Well, that's the plan. Okay, so we're pretty much on line with the runway. So let's get that velocity vector pointing towards the runway. If you look at this from outside, it's all going to look very sedate and calm. I don't want to stay out there too long because I need to control it. I'm mindful of the speed now. As we rotate, we'll lose a lot of that speed. So I'm ready on the throttles to balance it out as we rotate the nose up. Making small corrections all the way. The crosswind isn't really helping, but it gives us something more to do than just fly it straight in. And we're down. 130 knots. Now it's a case of steering it because it's going to try and weather cock into the wind slightly. So we just get onto the centre line and we can go and look outside. And that wasn't too difficult at all, was it? So the Dark Star, even though when it obviously when it's operating at high altitude, can do these crazy speeds, it's actually remarkably docile for landing. So there you go. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to bother taxiing back in and talking endlessly about it. But it's obviously it's a fictional aircraft, but it's good fun to fly. So there you go. Take the Dark Star out to Edwards. It's got an enormously long runway. The ICA Oco for Edwards is Kilo Echo Delta Whiskey. K-E-D-W. OK. I'm going to leave it there. Just roll this to a stop on the runway. There we go, there's the Dark Star in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll see you again soon.